We're open to attendees and we're recording. Okay. Seeing the presence of a quorum, I am calling the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee of the Town Council to order at 9.30 um, on October 25th. Uh, make sure everyone can hear and be heard. I'm going to call roll and then I'll talk about pursuant to. Mandy? Present. Michelle? Present. Sorry. Lynn? Lynn? Present. Uh, Jennifer? Uh, present. And I'm present. Okay. Pursuant to order chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 extended by chapter 22 and 107 of the acts of 2022 and extended by chapter two of the acts of 2023. This meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access, access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access, access, <laughs> access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Okay. Uh, it's uh, and, and Jennifer, there were some confusions so um, about setting up the packet, et cetera. So I didn't get back to you on on three and four, but what I'd like to start with, if, the, if it uh, feels comfortable to the uh, committee is the um, reparations committee charge. Um, I've gotten, and uh, Athena will be able to um, show it, but I have uh, responses from Kathy Shane, Andy Steinberg and Mandy Joe and um, questions of my own. Um, and so uh, we've been charged by look at, as a committee to really look at this committee charge and refine it and, um, and hopefully move forward with it. Jennifer? Yeah, I'm sorry, have we seen this before? It was in our town council packet. It's in our town council, I'm sorry. Was, I read the report, the, I didn't see It was see in this. the report, it was an attachment to yeah. the report. It was attached to the report. Okay, I'm it was, sorry. It starts on page 110 of the report. So yeah, it was buried it in amongst other attachments. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and uh, Athena, can you pull up or do you want me? I, I can get started with Kathy's comments or Mandy, you could start either one. There's some overlaps and... Uh, and some questions that I have and that, Michelle? Yeah, I wanna be really careful about my dual roles here. And so please help me if I, you know, get off track. Um, but I did want to ask you if it would be helpful to just provide some sort of general like comments about what we thought about when we looked at this draft, if that would be helpful to start the conversation. Sure. I, most importantly, I wanted to say that the biggest part of the discussion was related to giving the town manager um, some leeway because of that, the applicant pool can vary depending on um, timing and, you know, who's engaged at the time, um, giving the town manager some leeway to uh, decide whether it's a five or a seven body, you know, uh, group at, at a particular time. So that's what, why you'll see that in, in the charge. Mm -hmm. um, and then other than that, it was really just uh, trying to take what we had, uh, uh, you know, come up with in the recommendations and seeing where a successor body would be able to uh, take those recommendations and sustain the process. So that's all I'll say for right yes. now. Well, I have a question um, right now, in a sense, since you're bringing up the decision-making process. Sure. I'm, you seem to want two or three liaisons to this committee. And I'm wondering if it's clear to you and the AHRA what a liaison's role is, because um, I don't under, they don't, 
participate in the meeting. Um, they carry questions back. Um, so I'm, I'm a little confused about that. And that might be an easy place to start. I'm not sure um, if you sure. have any insight in about that, that would be helpful. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So again, you know, this, this uh, document is a template and we tried to fill it out to the best of our ability, but we didn't have uh, any strong opinions necessarily on a liaison. I think um, we put in there to have a, one council liaison. Of course, council may change the role of the liaison. Um, and then not. <laughs> or may not, right? <laughs> Um, or, and, um, we included one person from the CSSJC and HRC. Again, these were just sort of brainstorms. Um, it would be very helpful for us to think about this together, um, and, yeah. and, and decide that one thing I will say is, uh, Anika had suggested, and, and maybe she sent this to you, Pat, but, she had suggested when we talked the possibility of having somebody that was familiar with um, like allocating funds, like programmatic, you know, programmatically, like someone that might have some advisory capacity to think about that. Um, we couldn't really figure out how to get that into the charge. And it, I don't know that it needs a, a like a specific role, but I just did want to mention that. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to throw it open to the rest of you to start talking about this. Um, can you? Yeah, go ahead, Mandy. And then I'd like Kathy's stuff pulled up. There's <laughs> some overlaps. My question is, are we going to go through each section individually to talk to sort of structure the conversation? Or are we going to just, gen you know, like what, what's your plan for structuring this conversation? I thought we would go getting through it up, all of the stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I thought we could go through it step by step, okay. if that, unless there's another way people would like to do it. Um, I like. I would love to give people a chance to look at um, the comments from Kathy Shane, and and um, if you could pull that up and then let people read that. And Mandy, you'll see overlaps and and other things. Um, Kathy's is very long, um, but I yeah, actually not so bad. Um, so if people could just glance through that. Um, I'll add these to the packet as well. I didn't want to put them in there. I'm before. sorry. What is you know? I'll add the I'll add these list of questions from um counselors to the meeting packet. I didn't want to add it before okay. the committee had a chance to talk yeah. about it in public. And if people would let me know when they finish reading, that'd be great. Can you scroll? I'm I'm sorry. Could you go back up? I I'm a little bit of a slow reader. Thank you. Yeah.
You can scroll if, if others are ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Wait, I haven't read the no, charge. I, yet, I, <laughs> I was ready for scrolling, not this way. <laughs> I'm good with a scroll to the next page whenever others are. So am I. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, and this is the charge. Oh, that's just the charge. Yeah, we can go right through that, past that. And okay. Andy's very specific comments and concerns is about the Black only membership and the legality of that. So I think we can go down to Mandy. Uh, or we can start the discussion because Mandy has also gone right in order. Um, that's up to you guys. Jen? Uh, yeah, I hope this is an overall question. I, I just want to be clear that we only need to get state permission if we're going to make, if we're going to issue funds to individuals, but we can, we don't need to go to the state if it's going to be, we're going to give to education or housing. It depends if we're going to give to education or housing on the basis of race only specifically, you know, if, if we're going to make any kind of direct payment on the basis of race, then we would, you know, presumably have to go through that process. But if we're, let's say, offering down payment assistance um, and the stated goal is that we want to support folks who have been historically locked out of the housing market, then as long as we find a channel for which that money can move through legally, um, then I don't see a need for, but I'm not a lawyer, but that's my interpretation. Okay, that's people. really helpful because I didn't know that the state is concerned if you, about the basis on which you make it. I thought it was just the difference between whether it goes to individuals or, <clears throat> you know, like the schools. Right. It has to be oh. deemed like a public purpose if you're going to make a direct payment to somebody, like whether it be money for a down payment or that's my understanding, at least, or, um, you know, a direct cash payment, which, you know, we're not really talking. But if we about. decide to give money to the schools for, you know, let's say for history, you know, that that we wouldn't we could decide that on our own. That's okay. my it's interesting because the anti-aid amendment was created to stop funding uh, going to Catholic schools because of the Irish population in Massachusetts was increasing and they were considered black like Italians were for a long time. Um, so it's been in place. It, it is incredibly discriminatory and no one's ever really challenged it. Um, it's a shame. Uh, Mandy, do you want us to read through or do you want to just start speaking? You, you can read through them. That's fine. Okay. Like okay. with everyone else. Okay, people should let us know when it needs to be scrolled. I'm good on a scroll and I know about others. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, me too.
it would be really helpful, um, Athena, that now that we have this out and it's public for you to post it so we can refer back to it while we talk. It's yeah. already posted. It's in the online Thank packet in SharePoint. Thanks. Are we done with it at the general question? That was my last item. And that's okay. those are the comments that I received. Got it. So Mandy has proposed going through this step-by-step, -step, which I think is a really good idea. So I'd like us to do that. Um, Lynn? Yeah, I have an overarching question that okay. I'd like us to keep in mind, even though we will go through this as step-by-step. -step. And that is... The, the the fact that we have, with the adoption of some charge, whatever we do here, we would have two committees that in many ways are overseeing somewhat similar recommendations, okay? And so I'm trying to, it, one of the things that we, may do is have this committee have representation from those other committees to help with that communication. But in an overall way, I'm I'm concerned of, that it just it doesn't streamline decision making. It prolifer proliferates the number of people and bodies that need to do something. And and I just, I'm looking for a way to streamline, not proliferate. Yeah, I would agree with that. Michelle has her hand up. Yeah, go ahead, Michelle. I think this question that has come up in a couple of the counselor comments about the composition and whether the committee can be mostly black residents is an important question to answer um, with respect to what you're talking about, Lynn, because I think from the AHRA's perspective, um, it's really important that this committee doesn't sort of get watered down into some, you know, committee that's dealing with all diversity, equity, and inclusion issues or dealing with all issues that relate to BIPOC folks in the community, that it's really specific about Black reparations. Um, and so we want to kind of consider, you know, what the legalities are. I mean, the composition of the AHRA was specific about how many Black people uh, needed to be on it. And it, that question wasn't, hasn't been raised or to this point been uh, questioned um, from, you know, anyone. So I, but I do think that, you know, that's come up enough times that we may want to consider that as like a starting point for focus. And I would agree that we need to get a read on the legality. Um, mm -hmm. my, my question, and you just said something I thought was very interesting. And it was to have, is there a committee should there be a committee that basically works on a variety of issues related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And sometimes it has to put on a certain lens and other times it has to put on a different lens. And what we're now, and, and all of that falls under our director of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And in, in many ways, and that would be the logical place where the liaison would come from. So that's what raises this for me is, do we need to, or if we look at HRC as having some of that same charge, do we need three committees with a lens or could it be two or even one committee with multiple ways in which they have to address their job. 
and, and I just it for me it's I I so many so many times we're dealing with people that says well what committee does that go to or we're dealing with people who say well then shouldn't this committee or that committee weigh in and so I'm trying to get to the point that we don't have this multiplicity of confusion for the public as well as frankly for the council in the future. Yeah, I have a comment I want to make, but I'm going to call on Mandy and then Michelle. Thank you. First, um, I did bring up the legality of the um, composition of the assembly and, frankly, CSSJC when, when it was stated the same way. And it was not well received, even the mentioning of the possibility that it might not be legal. I'm just going to say that. So it's not that it hasn't been brought up. It was not well received by the council in bringing it up. Um, I, Lynn's question gets to, you know, I guess some of what both Kathy and I were seeing in this charge, which is what AHRA has explained by what they would initially want the committee to do is very similar to both what CPA and CDBG committees do. And so do we need a third committee? And then given what AHRA recommended in terms of the programming um, of the funds, if, if this were to go forward, do we need a third committee or that programming a lot overlapped with both CPA and CDBG programming goals um, in some sense, not a complete overlap. I but but you know, uh, even AHRA said have at least for housing CPA change their rules or or not change their rules, but but think about new priorities or additional priorities and all. And so, do we need a third committee doing? a lot of the same thing that two committees are already doing from that point of view. And then you look at the other part that, you know, some of what I was adding, a new bullet point about actual structural racism and eliminating that versus the payment of money to repair past harms. Um, does, does that need a new committee or can that be folded into the Human Rights Commission's role and work or CSSJC's work, recognizing that structural racism is not just against Black people. Um, that's why I recommend maybe the HRC. Um, but can some of the work be folded into other committees so we're not creating yet another committee that needs staff, that needs application that needs that, um, that we already know it is hard to find volunteers for the committees we have. Um, so I I don't know where I stand, but I bring that up. Okay. Michelle, then Jennifer, and then I'll take a turn. Yeah, I would just say um, to consider two things. One, we have a $2 million fund if we're thinking, you know, a $2 million commitment that will eventually get, you know, will be, be developed to $2 million and, and, and set up as an endowment. I think that is a significant amount of money that in my mind really does warrant having a stakeholder body to assess and, um, and determine what sorts of, uh, what sorts of ways those funds will be used. Um, the other thing I would say is the input is really important. So um, input coming from the Black community um, into some, you know, focal group that can focus on taking the voice of the Black community um, on a yearly basis um, and, and really uh, direct the funds where the repair is needed. We have to remember that what we signed up for here is Black reparations. And um, what that means is we're uh, determining what harm there has been historically and continues to be for the Black community. Um, they're the harmed community. And then we are um, using the fund and other resources that we have to repair that. 
I feel we would be taking a major step backwards um, if we uh, went and, and tried to have this be done by the HRC or by the by any other group for that matter. Um, I, I understand the complexities and the extra time that this would take uh, to, to have an additional committee, but we we went as far as setting up a $2 million commitment for this. Um, and we made a commitment to the harmed black community in this town. And so that's, I just really want to, without, uh, you know, without uh, judging necessarily like the thought process here, I just really wanted to put that out there. Jennifer? Yeah, I agree with Michelle. I, I think that this is a very, um, specific committee, I mean, this is has a specific charge and it's to address past harm to a particular community, not to all communities who experience discrimination. Um, and I don't, so I just, I think to spread this charge out among already existing committees, um, I, yeah, I, I don't, that doesn't seem appropriate for the charge, you know, for, for what, the purpose of this committee is, and I don't think that this committee is going to be hard pressed to have volunteers, to find volunteers. I think there will probably be more than there are spaces. That's just my feeling. Okay, I'm going to take a moment. Um, I feel like this needs to be a separate committee uh, for reasons that Michelle already shared and Jennifer shared. Um, and and it to me, it needs to represent black community voices. The problem that I'm hearing about um, are twofold. Well, one is who is the black community in Amherst? Right now we have only certain people speaking out and other members of the black community intimidated to speak out. So it seems to me that this council needs to find ways to reach the the black community. Um, and that is a pop, we can do that. Um, and the other thing that I'm concerned about is the reason that we're bringing up membership not being black only is because of Andy's, we have had a resident threaten a lawsuit. Now we have no idea whether they're gonna would go forward with that, but that's a hell of a threat for us to begin to think about. I also feel like if we're gonna unite and we're gonna find ways to collaborate, it would potentially be very valuable to have non-Black people on this committee supporting the goal of Black reparations. We also haven't decided as a body, the council, whether or not this is going to any Black person in Amherst or are we holding the line? And I don't, I have, I am not stating an opinion here. Are we holding the line only for descendants of slavery? Or are we opening it to the full black community? And how do we as a community define that? It starts to make like, I'm trying to think one drop of black blood makes you black, uh, which was used to stop people's lives and intimidate people. Uh, so I think there, we need to think about this very carefully, but it does need to be a separate committee, Mandy, and then Lynn. Yeah, I guess one thing I'm still struggling to understand is what I see as the disconnect between reparations for past harms to Black people and what was actually recommended in the AHRA report and what Michelle you've said about how we can structure payments. Um, the recommendation was for any black individual to be eligible for whatever programs, um, payments from programs that we come up, even if they move here 10 years from now. Um, and even if they have no history in the United States, if they move here from a different country, um, which is a completely different uh, understanding of what reparations for past harm is. Um, but number two, you've also said even today, um, 
we might not be able to, because of legal constraints, limit the payments to, say, Black individuals for home ownership opportunities, that it might have to be historically marginalized, all of that, which then almost takes it out potentially of the Black reparations realm because any historically marginalized community, women, low income, other other non-Black individuals would be eligible for those programs. And so that's part of what I'm wrestling with as I look at a charge like this and the comments that are coming through of using reparations funds for repairing past harms, yet multiple places and multiple statements have been made that it wouldn't necessarily be only directed, number one, at Black people, um, to and, and number two, at Black individuals who have actually been harmed by their time in Amherst. Um, so I, I don't know what the answer is, but I guess what I'm saying is this is where I'm, I, I don't know what to do with this charge because of some of those statements that have been made. Okay, and I'm trying to figure out right now, and I'd like some input from people. Lynn should be going next, but I'm trying to figure out, Michelle, can, um, do you want to respond or do you, can you wait till we go through and get to you? I can absolutely wait. I'm taking notes. No worries. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Lynn? So, Lynn? I yeah, I, I just want to give a parallel. If you're on a scholarship committee, at a university or a college, you're, you have different funds you're overseeing. Some of those funds have restrictions as to who they can go to. And yet the scholarship committee is a single committee. And it says, okay, we have these funds and they have to be uh, only go to women. Okay. I, I, I want to, I'm jumping into this and yet I'm feeling the tension of jumping in and somehow or another being labeled as opposed to what we've done. And I'm not, okay? But I, I'm i just looking at, I mean, $2 million is a big commitment. And at the same time, it's not that big, okay? And it's, and yet, we're, we want to create an entire committee and structure to just oversee that. And yet over here, we have the CSSJC with all of the recommendations that it has. And some of those are parallel, like um, a youth center, that kind of thing. Um, and I, I just want to make sure that we think about what it is that makes sense for tackling this critical issue in Amherst and not uh, basically bifurcating everything all over the place. And so I'm, I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't have a committee that has a focus of reparations. I'm just suggesting that maybe there is one committee structure that de deals with all kinds of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And one of its tasks is this. And frankly, maybe CSSJCs gets folded into that as well. So that's why I'm I'm coming at it from that perspective. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, I think your perspective is a good one. I understand the simplicity issue, but I, yeah. So um, Jennifer? Yeah, well, I, I see diversity, equity, inclusion as being very separate from what the charge that we're talking about for this committee. I mean, if we wanted to, and I think we would need to discuss this with CSSJC, if it made sense to maybe be a, a subcommittee of that committee, but I don't think we should be the ones to decide that. Um, but I don't think it's part of DEI. That's a much bigger, I, I don't think it, it's just, it's very separate. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, no. That makes me very uncomfortable that we would put CSSJC, DEI, the Human Rights Commission and reparations in any way together. Um, but I think if we were to say there was some, I, I think that we would have to have a conversation with if we were going to 
make it a part of an existing committee, we would need to have a conversation with the ARA and that committee. I don't think that we, the GOL, should be deciding that. Jennifer, I agree with the uh, AHRA, ARA, I've never called it that, um, be consulted on this, I really do. Um, and I'm just gonna say in a general way, CSSJC is Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. So um, there is a possibility of it fitting there. I'm worried in uh, of another variety of this thing is we've got all these people from other committees coming into this committee. <laughs> and I feel like whatever we decide, there needs to be solid ground and structure around whether we put it in another committee or we form uh, a separate reparations committee. Um, and I'm, I, yeah. Okay, Michelle, and then Lynn is your hand up. Okay, Michelle. Yeah, I just wanted to um, say that Lynn's observation about the tension is real. And um, and I, I encourage us um, to really like take our time with this and not feel like, we have to, you know, have a decision by the end of this meeting. Like, I, I really think we need to allow for these questions to come up and to be taken in and responded to in a thoughtful way. And, and also to trust that some of this, like we're, we, we really are creating something new here. And so we don't have a lot to look to. And so um, I think that um, trusting that some of this is going to come with time and we may need to make adjustments and we may try something and that may not work and we might need to try something else. But I do think we have to consider like the primary, um, Lynn, uh, your, your example about the scholarship um, committee, so I, I I I understand what you're saying completely, and from a simplistic and efficiency point of view, that makes sense. But what's so special and significant about reparations, black reparations, is that it is that we're asking the harmed community how they see repair happening. So we can't really imagine if that scholarship committee was made up of 90% of people that were not from the harmed community. We can't ask that committee to put on the lens. It's just not in this case. Um, in my opinion, we can't ask a, a majority white or a majority non-Black committee to put on a lens um, to make decisions about how repair should happen for black people. I just, I feel very, very strongly about that. And I think there, there may be a way, um, and I think we've discussed that the CSSJC charge may need a looking at, um, because there's been some confusion about what the role of that committee is as well. So, um, it's possible that there could be a committee uh, that would encompass some of the more of this. I just think we have to not look at this through a DEI lens. This is not reparations is not DEI. And that's and, and that's for the benefit not only of black residents, but of the whole community. If we started to try to co-mingle those, it would it would be, um, in, my, in my opinion, detrimental to other identities in the community, not just black folks. Um, and I just wanted to respond, Mandy, to some of your questions. I, I think that, you know, what you're talking about is so, um, it, it, it really is central to the discussion on reparations, whether you're talking about it federal, state, or local. And I do think we need to continue to have that discussion. Um, you know, our recommendations took into account the legal limitations that we had. I think had we not known from KP law early on that we had those legal limitations, then we may have possibly less programmatic recommendations and more direct 
benefit recommendations. I think we're trying to kind of have a hybrid. And as we develop um, whatever it, whether it be programmatic or more direct uh, benefits, there's going to be a legality piece that we're going to have to consider and an eligibility piece, as you've brought up several times. And I think that's really, really important um, to keep at the forefront. And I don't think we're going to be able to necessarily work it all out in this charge. I think we're going to have to have some space in this charge and be willing and flexible, be willing to say, you know what, we might not get it right exactly right this first time, but this is our best get, you know, our best at it. And then we'll, we'll, we can revisit it as we go along. Thank you for giving me all that space, Pat. Pat, I just want to correct one thing. I never suggested it be a subcommittee of another committee. Thank you. Pat, you're muted. Yeah, I'm sorry. Their phone kept ringing. Um, I didn't hear it as a subcommittee. I thought I what I thought you were suggesting, Lynn, is that uh, the this be added to the charge of another committee, that it no. be something specific. No. It's, I, I, you well, know, can you clarify, it, it, Lynn, because let me finish, please. What I thought you were saying, and I, this may be true for others or not, is that you wanted to, uh, I hate to using this word in this way, integrate this, the issue of reparations, Jennifer is not, into another already existing committee. That's what I heard. And I'm not saying that's a good or bad idea right now. I'm just clarifying, is that what you were talking about? Or are you, because that's not a subcommittee to me. I've never, that word didn't even occur to me in this process so far. So is there something you want to clarify then? Or is that what you no, mean? I, I'm, I have said in the beginning that as we look at this, I think we should look at simplifying where the yeah. public can go, whether that mm -hmm. is the creation of a committee that includes a variety of different charges or whatever it is, just that was my point. I'm done discussing this. Thank you. Well, well that, that's too bad. <laughs> it is too bad. Whoa. I, I, I do not understand what's going on right now. And I think that we need to stop as a committee and talk about what's going on. Because we're not going to be able to continue. Michelle? Yeah, I just, I will make a recommendation. This is, this is totally normal what's happening right now. Um, and, 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 and of course, I, I think what my recommendation is, we just received a lot of information from our colleagues that we really haven't had a chance to digest. We've had some discussion. Those, those, those uh, suggestions from our colleagues are now in a, in a packet that other of our colleagues can see. My suggestion is we pause um, and, and take some time to review those, take some time to think about this. There is nobody's wrong here. Really, honestly, nobody. This is this is a really fruitful discussion, and I think that pausing right now would be a really um, good opportunity for us. Um, and I know, as a chair, Pat, you have to think about timing and things like that. Um, I but never if, think about that. Go ahead. <laughs> if that works for you, I think that we pause, we take in some of this great feedback we've gotten, this discussion that we've had, and then we come back to this either later in the meeting or at an at our next meeting. That's that's my recommendation. Okay. Mandy. I, I want to thank Michelle for her, her words and her recommendation. I would request, um, if possible, if we bring this up at another meeting, Kathy referenced the CPA committee. I had actually tried to find the CPA committee charge and I could not, um, <laughs> um, but I referenced the CDBG charge um, too. I was able to find one. I don't know whether it's the most recent. Um, and then we're also having had discussed 
the Human Rights Commission and the CSSJC, it might be helpful the next time to be able to see the draft charge for the committee we've been discussing, this A, B, R, C, um, but also those other four charges, just to sort of see, they seem to be the most relevant charges for whatever reason, that we might even incorporate language into a new charge and, and all of that, but it would be helpful, I think, if we had those charges in a packet to all reference if possible. Okay, Jennifer? I'll try and find those and add them to the next uh, meeting packet, Mandy. Thank you. Thank you, Athena. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say, I know, Michelle, you said at the beginning, you were a little concerned because you wear two hats, but I think it's just incredibly helpful. We couldn't have this discussion without you being here since you're on both committees. Right. You know, yeah, so thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, go ahead, Lynn. I would ask that we also get the legal opinion that's been asked for by several people now about committees. Uh, that and makes sense. I'm just wondering if I interrupted you. I thought you were finished. I'm sorry. That's it. That's it. I'm wondering if um, the legal opinion would be of the charge as it is now, um, and that would be helpful. Um, the, le the legal and opinion it would probably would be, have to be. Go ahead, Lynn. The legal opinion would be is whether or not you can appoint a committee with the requirement that certain membership be of a certain um, race or okay. other if, qualifications. Like you know, if it was an all woman committee, can you do that? Okay. The only thing about that is uh, that feels like. Um, a question that could be that other questions could be attached to that. That's sort of a, a pretty much a yes or no with some detail. And I don't know if I want to keep going back and forth with KP law or whether we want to collect some of these to present to KP law. So it's not slowing down the process. I feel like we need to slow down the process of what we're going through. Absolutely but I don't know if I want things going to KP law piecemeal and I will take the advice of the committee on that. Michelle? And Pat, if you'd like, I could work with you just to start to identify some of the legal questions that have come up um, from our colleagues, from the AHRA. Yeah. We could start to put a list together um, and then maybe have that prepared for this body when we talk about this again so that we can uh, sort of see if that's a good list. Um, I agree. I think that going back and forth, back and forth to KP law um, for a variety of reasons isn't the best approach. And I think we may need, there's like a chicken and egg situation where we may need some information before we can get to the next step. So I think we can find a, a middle ground there, but I'd be happy to help you with that, Pat. Thanks. Um, I don't know whether that constitutes a subcommittee, Athena. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Um, if if um, Michelle's just going to put those questions together, then that's fine, yeah. and she can seek advice from a member. Um, I was just going to point out that the, this committee has um, just three meetings left before the last council meeting. Um, so, and I was going to raise this later under future agenda items. Just um, that the, this committee will need to start working on a carryover memo. Yeah. Um, and um, wrapping things up. So if this is something that the committee wants to make a recommendation to the council on before the last council meeting to just think about, you know, how much time we have left and, um, you know, if, if the committee is going to agree on a set of questions that we're going to ask, that you'll ask KP Law for advice on, that's, I'm just worried about the, the timeline and, and, mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Athena. Anything yeah. else, Athena? I'm I'm going to take a little time and probably step in stuff, but that's life. I may have gotten distracted because my phone kept ringing and messages were being left, uh, and I'm trying to focus here. I do not know what happened that made you upset, Lynn, but I do know that all of this is extremely difficult to talk about. And 
so I just I I just want to figure out if we can't do it, then then how do we do it as a community? So so I don't know what you can share or what you won't share, and I apologize for not knowing. And it could have been something I said or something, but I kind of need to know what's going on. I am not upset per se. What I have done is stuck stuck my neck out. Yes. And it's been misinterpreted as being against this, as being trying to um, push this back into the white community, uh, any number of things, none of which is true. I and didn't. I so didn't. I, Pat, I don't think we can debate this. OK, I just want to be very clear. I'm not trying to debate anything. I'm trying to figure out what the hell happens. What I propose I, I, that people think about something. And in the process of asking people to think about something, as always happens or often happens in these kinds of conversations, I get labeled. And I've seen it happen to other counselors. And it is one of the reasons why no one wants to speak up, because it's a delicate issue to discuss. And it is. And when you do discuss it, it's hard to find the right words. And what I just don't appreciate is having my words twisted. Thank you. Lynn, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I don't, I'm gonna accept your feelings and, and the validity of those feelings, but I don't see how your words were twisted. And, you know, maybe that's a conversation we can have privately. Michelle, you were gonna say something? Yeah, I was just going to say that I also accept Lynn's feelings, but also am wondering where she felt her words were twisted um, and if there's a repair that needs to happen there. Um, and again, maybe this is not for um, the public discussion necessarily, but I just wanted to say um, it is hard to talk about these topics and, you know, um, even uh, maybe Lynn, you were referring to uh, your suggestion about looking at the scholarship committee and um, just it, I, it, you know, um, this is a unique situation. And so um, it doesn't mean we shouldn't look at all sorts of models. Um, and so, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm sorry that there's that, that you're, seems that your feelings were were hurt Lynn and um and I hope that we can restart again next time thank you Michelle um everybody on this committee except perhaps Michelle has been called a racist by the community or has been called some other name um and it, it's uh sad because it affects Every member of the council, it affects members of the community. And as I said earlier, within the black community itself and the BIPOC community itself, people are afraid to speak out. So it is uh, probably the biggest problem that we face as a community. Okay. Um, I, I, I. All right. I. The other agenda item, uh, so uh, I'm going to bring this back next week. Um, Athena, I may sit with you and try to make up a schedule if you have time, uh, but we can arrange that. But you were going to speak? I was just going to suggest we take 30 seconds to breathe. Yeah, why don't we take a five minute break? Uh, I don't, I can't see the, let me see. Uh, it's 1025, let's come back at 1030. Thank you. Please take your pictures off.
And I apologize for eating, but I'm starving. I'm gonna take my picture off temporarily. I'm not sure I like my chewing face. Um, we have a thousand things that we really need to deal with. Um, I definitely want to get to some of the continued look at the rules of procedure. Um, and I want to find a way to get that um, worked on <laughs> so we can have it ready for council in some format. But I'm thinking we, we had talked about specifics for town manager goals last time. And is that a place that people want to uh, look at right now? I could use some help from the committee on where we go next. I forget what the timeline is. I, yeah. I'm ready to look at it now. When is it first? When is a first draft supposed to be at the council? I'm Athena, do you know that? Because I don't right now. I'm just checking our planning. I think it's uh, November 20 is we have a draft on the agenda and then a vote on December 4 um, and December 18, if not December 4. So we probably should start the discussion today. Pat, you're muted. I can't see either. <laughs> um, I have not gotten a lot of input from counselors, but I will try to see what's there and pull it together for our next meeting. Jennifer and then Michelle. Um, I just have a, a question. Um, last, for this year's town manager goals, did we actually not um, finalize them and vote on them till January? Right, so this year we cannot do that because the council, right. Right, because this is not something that feels like it could be a carryover. Um, because we're we're setting the goals for the next council, whether, you know, Michelle and then Mandy. That was similar to what I was, I remember Lynn saying last year that we were really getting the goals pretty late to the town manager. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's because we took a, extra time. We were, I remember really working on the goals last year for <laughs> multiple meetings. Um, so yeah, I, I had the same observation. Mandy and then Lynn. So I, I went through them this morning and, and have marked up my PDF of the goals with changes I think are logical um, or need done because of what he's been doing and done and completed. So they need revised for that reason, along with some things I'd like to add. Um, I can go through them now if Pat's for next meeting planning on bringing in a sort of revised draft based on comments, I, I can send them to Pat, it would probably be easier if I had the Word document to send so that I could do a marked up copy for combination instead of just a written on a PDF. Um, I just added that to the packet. Excellent. Um, but I can briefly go through some of them so that it's been out there at least if people would like. And then I, I was like going to say CRC is still trying to come up with its own potential recommendations related to the goals that CRC's charge puts some stuff into CRC four. I don't know whether we will finish that, um, but it will be on our next agenda, which is before CRC's next meeting. Okay. Um, I'd like to um, start working on that and uh, having you put them in, but I'd like to hear from Lynn first. Oh, I wanna confirm the timeline and the fact that our last meeting is on the 18th of December, and we do need to finish them However, I also want to mention that the next council can always go back in and revise something. Right. The thing that is most unfair is to 
not give the talent manager the goals so he has a maximum amount of time to achieve them. So, and Mandy Joe, I believe you did similar something last year. I'm sorry you didn't have the Word document, but thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else before we have Mandy start with her edits? Mandy, do you prefer to share your document or should I make changes in here? Um, so I just have a PDF with handwriting that's probably not readable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what I'll, I will say. Sorry, I'll try and, No, no, no. I'll try and um, make notes in here and I'll post the um, this re as revised and um, yeah. add that to the packet. And, and some of them, as I said, are things that I, I haven't been through the full manager self-evaluation, but some that he indicated he had completed. So we would either yeah. delete or revise to address that. Some are my own requests for addition, so are not just updates to the goals. Um, but but I, I can go through what I've got. Uh, Athena already started with the years. Um, there's one more in the third paragraph of the intro for the year. Um which is a minor change, obviously. Um, and I'll wait till she's done saving. Um, so one thing I'd like to add to climate action, and I'll talk about this because it's just a, right now I don't have great wording. Um, and I don't have a new sub goal, but to the first sentence, something about climate resiliency that we need to not just make progress on our action goals of carbon neutrality, but we also have to somehow prepare uh, the 2023 in the third paragraph, Athena. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we somehow have to prepare the town for being resilient in the face of climate change. And so I would add, I, I'm requesting personally, in addition to that first sort of sentence that talks about progress on the council's climate action goals, some sort of addition that says prepare the town to be resilient in the face of climate change or some, I don't know the great mm -hmm. wording of it. Um, but something like that, that talks about the other half of climate change, trying to prevent it as much as possible, but also being able to respond to, oh, not in that, in the actual climate action section, Athena, instead of general objectives. Um, it, it was the first, the first sentence like the right, yeah, right before you get to the number one, something like that. Um, in terms of, it looked like from the manager's evaluation that he going to that one, number two says complete JPE formation and then submit the CCA to the DPU. Well, it's already been submitted. So we would in that number two, I assume the update would be not submit the application, but um start with and start implementation of cca upon approval or something like that so mm -hmm. delete the submit part completely now that so athena if you just submit the yeah and then you can take delete all the way to start because start would be the complete instead of start or i start implementation yeah i don't know whether it's complete or start um and then we just have to add the modifier implementation of cca upon approval mm -hmm. i think he also indicated under the carp stuff where we get to the letters that letters b d and f have been done still within climate action um it appeared Paul indicated that in his self-evaluation, B, D, and F. And then again, where I don't have anything, if we're going to say we need to prepare to be resilient, maybe we want a numbered goal along that, but I don't have wording for it. You know, because we've got a one, two, a three, and a four with an A, B, whatever, maybe there needs to be a five. I don't know. We can talk about that later. Yeah. Um, I think there does need to be a five, but keep going. Yeah. Community health and safety. Um, item number one, I am hoping can be deleted by the time we pass this. <laughs> but it can't be yet. <laughs> well, but 
this is for next year. So I'm I'm hoping we can propose something that doesn't have that in there. Um, it might want to be instead of support, implement the residential rental bylaw or something. Mm -hmm. Um, instead of maybe we don't want to delete it completely, but yeah, uh, I think implement. You know, something like that. Again, I haven't thought through all of these. Um for economic vitality. Uh, CRC talked about, but we don't have specifics that both numbers one and three, we should have specifics instead of just, um, you know, review, review, facilitate review and revision. We, we thought about maybe recommending specific action of what parts to be done, but there's no specifics there um, and all. So adding, thinking about what the specifics could be. We might have more from CRC in another two weeks on that. Um, similarly with housing affordability, um, all of them are prioritize, explore, ensure, you know, numbers one and four say prioritize or explore. Again, for specifics or something, maybe we want to add propose instead of prioritize and instead of explore in number one and number four. Um, and same with number three, instead of increase the diversity, propose measures to increase the diversity. Um, because you might not be able to increase the diversity without doing something regulatory. And then one thing in looking at housing affordability that that I I thought was missing personally was something about rental prices. So whether we want to add something about a number five that would be proposed measures or whatever to lower rents that might have the effect of lowering rents. Again, I don't have wording, but another of my personal thoughts yeah, on that. A lot of them focused on home ownership, but not rental costs. Um, and that means that he could begin working or the council could also, in support of him, uh, work on reestablishing rent control in Massachusetts, things like that. Yeah. But That's something good. about rental costs, yeah. yeah. Um, for major building, capital building investments, um, number one, we have the financing plan. So I thought the financing plan part might be able to be deleted. Um, this is still, I think this is going to, this part is going to come up. Oh, okay. Um, there's that 5 million that's still out there, but I think it's going to come up before the end of the year or so. Yeah. Um, so we can say like if completed. No, it it would just be that part of it, the devise of financing that I thought might be able to be deleted. Cause the rest still needs to be in there, right? Mm -hmm. Support the committee and meet the milestones and deadlines. But yeah, that one, who knows? Just That's thinking of an update. Yeah. And similar with number two, the report to the council on state of financing will be this year. So I was thinking that could potentially be deleted if we're looking towards next year's goals. Um, and instead mirroring the language of number one. So um, work and it's realized to renovate, expand, and what was it? And meet milestones and deadlines or something like that just so it mirrors number one. I don't know whether there are any more milestones and deadlines with that, but. And I'm kind of frustrated with uh, three and four. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Hickory Ridge has been proposed over and over again as an effective site it's being used now by the fire department the chief has said that's as far out as it could be but it's not problematic where it is where it would be um I, you know the there's no timeline there's no there's we have had the same goal for the whole time we've been on the council and so i'm not sure what it is that i want us because we don't have um 
a location or identif- we have it identified and nothing's happening with it the town manager is not bringing it to the council the council's not asking him to so so how to make this more specific i'm at a loss but maybe my friend jennifer or my friend lynn will have good ideas jennifer uh, well no i was going to say that i guess we respond to this in the evaluation in our evaluations that but when we have the same goal year objective year after year and we don't have to change the wording that's a problem yeah lynn i share the frustration um but again that should be reflected in the evaluation i actually have two things and i don't know whether they should go here or elsewhere that i would like added to this about the projects? Um, well, the sorry. question is, are they major building, are they major capital building investments? The reality is uh, this: re- the renovation of the senior center that hmm. has been discussed under ARPA money is a major project. It's, you know, a probably 2 million plus project. And then the whole issue of how do we catch up on repair and replacement of roads and sidewalks, which at a minimum is a $40 million project. So I really want to see those reflected either here or someplace else, but I think of them as major. Yeah, I agree. There's a whole separate uh, section four is in the goals are infrastructure management. Um, So I think that some of what you're saying would go in there, Lynn. It it might, but it's, they're so large in scope. Yeah. I don't think of them as kind of just small projects. I mean, under the road issue, um, what I really want to see is a multi-year plan developed and begin implementation for roads and sidewalks. Mm. I this is you know we can't, oh. we can't we cannot address this with a two million dollars a year plan. Right. It's we're never going to get ahead. And oh. on the senior center, there he's the town manager has already talked about that being a major commitment. Um, the it, on the proposals that he came forward on ARPA, it was probably the one uh, most agreed to by all of us. And the next one was the canopy over the high school. If it could be figured out how to do it on property, we don't own. So Okay. But right good. now, it feels like the distribution of ARPA funds is... But I, I think, how do people feel about uh, adding the roads and sidewalks to capital building and I mean it's maybe then we change the category to major capital investments so it's not just building I mean the senior center is a renovation the solar power uh, solar panels on the high school is a separate issue um, but roads and sidewalks and feels like I don't know what do people think about that Michelle and then Mandy and then Jen I think we should consider having an, an entirely ca- category all on its own for roads and sidewalks to really raise it to the level that is required um, right now. Um, so I think we should consider that. Um, I would also, I know youth center is somewhere here, um, but mm-hmm. um, that's another 500,000 that's already been set aside for that. So that's already been thought of and um, and then, um, Pat, I just wanted to ask you, are you saying um, that some information has come to us that Hickory Ridge is the um, it, it is the chosen location for the central? No, no, it is not chosen. Okay. That's where I'm confused. Okay. Okay. So I was like, the <laughs> fire chief says that it works fine and they are using it. And the firefighters themselves have said it's much easier on their return back into Amherst because they can go East Hadley Road. Uh, but, you is, know, so is that something that we can prescribe? Like, can we say? I mean, it, it seems like that's a 
a bigger discussion that the council would that, want to have, but are you asking for us to include that specifically in terms of location in the goal? The council has to vote the location. I'm sorry, what, Lynn? The council has to vote the location. Yeah. And which we haven't done because it never comes back. And I don't understand that process anymore. But what I was mostly referring to is that we identify and secure look we've been this is the same goal for the last four or five years so how do we get movement on it because there is none or if there is it's not being shared with the council um so I, I think i think we should really like pause there for a second and, and ask the question lynn you just said that it needs to be voted by the council is that on an agenda for uh it I have not been asked to put it on an agenda by the town manager. But so what it, do what we you have need to power? do is okay, so let me just we could force the issue uh by saying we want to, but you cannot move to schematic design until you actually identify the real location because schematic design is done based on a location. And I agree with Pat, there's been this discussion kind of out there, oh, let's use Hickory Ridge. But then there was also the discussion out there for many years of let's use the DPW site. So the two of these keep going hand in hand. And at some point, the town council also has to vote money. So it's it, there's, there's a lot of you know, that has to go into this. Right. So how do we make, how can we make this more specific, Mandy and then Jen? Yeah, so I, I want to respond to a couple things here. I think we could, instead of say, identify and secure, bring to the council for a vote, a location for the replacement, mm -hmm. something yep. like that. Um, yep. I want to say, I believe town meeting already funded the schematic design phase. There might need more, but I believe town meeting already voted the borrowing for schematic design for the central fire station. Mm -hmm. We eight it, years ago or something. So it's also it was probably costs in, more now, but it's it's already partially funded um, through, a, I believe, through a vote of town meeting. Um, I don't necessarily agree with a roads and sidewalks section. Um, I would not put it under capital building investments. I think building investments is our buildings. It doesn't have to be a new building, but I think it's the meant for big buildings. So community centers, senior center, youth center, all of that. Um, instead of specifics, though, I, I hesitate to use this document to avoid conversations about priorities of building, including priorities of a youth center versus a senior center versus just a community center that includes it all. Um, so I, I would say instead of specific centers, and I actually had, I, I have a note on the youth center is talked about in the community health and safety part up of above. this, right. um, up above. And I actually had made a note that I didn't bring up as I was going through, do we want to say community center instead of youth empowerment center? But um, maybe a number six or something that talks about identifying for the council or presenting the council with other major building investments with its trade-offs or something so that the council can actually have a conversation about large projects mm -hmm. um, instead of using the document to sort of um, agree on projects that maybe we haven't actually had discussions on, but putting them in there as if it's been discussed and agreed upon. Um, for roads and sidewalks, I would stick that, keep that down where we've kind of got it in management goals under um, infrastructure management, maintenance, and land stewardship. Um, but yeah, again, part of that discussion involves what, number one, how much money and a plan, but also number two, what are we aiming for our roads to be when we look at the road the index or whatever that has excellent, good, fair, poor, awful, or whatever the five level <laughs> levels are on there, where are we aiming for? Um, because that changes 
is what that number is. Are we aiming for everything to be good and better? Are we aiming for everything to be fair and better? Three and better out of a one to five scale, two and better. What are, we haven't had those discussions either. And that really changes the cost estimate, I would assume. Um, so again, I would argue for a discussion or some sort of presentation for discussion on something like that. Um, because if we do end up saying we want to spend 40 million on roads, what we got to know what we're giving up for that. Um, right. You know, that's, that's a major discussion. That's not something that should just be added into these goals of do it in my mm -hmm. mind. And maintaining a list of future roads and sidewalk repairs that gets added to, but nothing, what happens with that list? Where are we going? And I think we need to have some specifics there. Jen? You're muted. Sorry. I click on it and it goes back to mute. But um, anyway, so yeah, I think that we do need some specificity. You know, now, now that I've just completed one year, you know, the first year you're on the council for the first time, you know, you're evaluating the town manager on goals that were set by the previous council. So this is, I feel like the first time I've been involved in setting the goals and then seeing the self-evaluation that comes back. And I am concerned that the goals get so general that if the town manager reports back that he's working on something, then we say, oh, great, he's working on it. But we're not, have we really moved anywhere on? So I think we need to have some specificity of exactly what should be accomplished. So it's not just that, well, we kind of worked on something. Um, and yeah, so I'm just wanna, that's just a general comment. Um, so I do think when we say the thing about the DPW and the fire station, it just doesn't change from year to year. And I think that's frustrating to us. It's certainly frustrating to the public. Um, so I think with sidewalks, you know, I was agreeing with Michelle, but I think it coming under infrastructure, but yeah, I think we we need something specific. So like we got a list in one of the town manager reports of this 10 roads that were next being done. Yeah, you know, I drove to some of those roads. I was, I wanted to now understand how those roads were selected because they don't necessarily seem like the most major roads or the roads in as much need. So it's just a general comment of how can we structure what we're asking to be done in the next year so we can really, you know, evaluate based on real benchmarks next time, a year from now, whoever's on the council. Any, re Lynn, and then Mandy? Yeah, I, I either... To me, the issue of road repair and sidewalks is one of the most, single most things we hear about from constituents. And I would really either urge that we have it as a separate goal or that we put it up in the policy area and we put it up in the policy area and refer later in infrastructure, or we do what was suggested earlier and we list it under major capital projects not building projects only. Mandy? I guess I'd be okay with changing major capital building investments to major capital investments, um, as was suggested, I think, by yeah. Michelle um, or Jennifer. Um, I think it was me. Or <laughs> whoever it was. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I knew it wasn't me. <laughs> um, um, I would keep it as investments, not projects. I like the word investments um, there. Um, I, I obviously have more. I'm happy to let this conversation continue before I get to some of my other suggestions. But so we would want are people in agreement with this change? We can do it by consent. You know, is everybody okay, Lynn? I'm fine. Uh, Jen. 
I don't think we have to vote if we can come to Yeah, I don't no, think about it, actually. But <laughs> please put a note under at the end of this. Add in roads and sidewalks. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And then and the other thing that keeps coming up is what, where do we want and is it in the right place uh, that would be um, the issue of uh, go back up to the top to the first second goal I think it is yeah the issue of the under here the whole issue of the youth center yeah I mean number three in community health and safety deals with both a center and programming yes right right and the plan and there is money in ARPA put aside for that and I believe the town manager plans to have some committee convened for that, but that's down the road. He hasn't done it. Um, okay. It, and as long as people are fine with it there, or should it go, it, it does seem to me like that's the place it should be. Well, there seems to me a difference. Yeah, I agree that it should be here because we can start programming without having a building. We have rec facilities, and there are there are possible. Uh, I've talked to Amherst College; that didn't, didn't quite work um, for space and stuff like that. But there are options, so it's more like, can we get something up and running? We also need to clarify: Are we talking about a youth empowerment center, which was the original proposal, or are we talking about a bipop? You know, what are the details? And again, those are. Those are conversations that are difficult to have. And I'm I'm gonna call um on Michelle and then I'll go to Jen and Mandy if that's okay. Yeah, I was just picking up on I did see that the town manager, I think in his um one of his reports said that he was putting together a a committee or an ad hoc task force right. to determine about. So is that something that we wanna explicitly put into the goals that that the formation of that committee unless Lynn you have some knowledge that that's happening in the next couple of weeks if it's not then maybe putting specific since we can pick up on something we know is already sort of in process that he has stated maybe making you know putting that in here to solidify that and we're blah, blah, blah. so that would be as part of number three or would it be um, part of number two, right? Uh, oh, number three. Yes, exactly. Like, um, um, you know, the whatever language we might use to say, like, um, to uh, form the committee. Uh, I, I I could pull up actually the town manager report and use the language from there if I can find it that he. Uh, well, let's put form committee right now, and then yeah, if you see yeah. the then Athena the language that would be helpful. Athena, I'm sorry, I'm bumping the line for Athena. Um, this um issue of the town manager forming a committee is coming up in finance when we're talking about the disposition policy. Um, the surplus property disposition policy, because the formation of a committee is really um, an, an advisory committee to the town manager is really at the discretion of the town manager. Um, and it seems a little um, odd to have the council specify how the town manager would bring a recommendation to the council. Mm. Um, so you're saying the forum committee should not be there? I, I, yeah, I, I just, Lynn, wanna, you're not next. Hang on one second. I know, but I want to be clear that what I think Athena is saying is something that we should all keep in mind. How specific do we want to get in terms of how something should be accomplished versus a, just say, please accomplish this? That's all. Thank you, Lynn, but I think Athena wasn't quite finished. And, that's and, all right. That's 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 pretty much okay. what I wanted to say. I think, you know, saying the council wants to see this as a request coming from the town manager rather than saying exactly how the town manager comes up with that request. Um, I think that I, th there's a uh, 
you know, the executive function and the legislative function. And I think that sort of, I'm trying not to use the word micromanage because I don't want to be insulting to your suggestion, Ms. Michelle. <laughs> but um, I, th I think it gets a little bit, you know, telling ex the town manager exactly how to do his job. I, I'm sorry. I just I was just picking up on what he already put out there in the town manager report. So just to sort of give, I don't want to say throw a bone, but like he's already put it out there. So let's put it in here and then he'll be able to accomplish it pretty quickly. But I totally get your point as well. Okay. So I'm going to suggest we remove it. Jen or Mandy? I think Mandy's hand went up first. Okay. I was going to say Jennifer's did, but um, um, I'll go. Um, I, I suggest splitting that from community health and safety number three into two, removing the explore options for youth empowerment center into number, I guess it's five or, or into some version of number five, the building or capital investments as some sort of explore there in somehow how I talked about it else but keeping the programming part in number two and in in this section um and maybe something like increase programming for youth and in particular incorporate something like that i i also worry about something that athena was trying to to talk around which is getting too specific i as jennifer said we need some specifics we've struggled jennifer with this for five years how specific is too specific, how specific is not specific enough, right? And we're still working on where that balance is because we don't want to give him, give the manager exactly how to do it so that there's no leeway for his judgment. Yet we need to give some guidance, right? So maybe increased programming for youth empowerment or something gives him a way to figure out how to do it without being specific in how or what we want to see. Um, that was my comments there. I obviously have others for other things. Okay, Jen. So getting to number four, propose a plan and timeline for the creation of a resident oversight board. Okay, so shouldn't for next year be to seat the resident oversight board? Like if a plan and a timeline was being created this year, we shouldn't just say, well, keep on proposing a plan and timeline. I mean, like, isn't two years enough time for the resident oversight board to be impounded, or so to speak? <laughs> I agree with that. So it might need reworded, but the RFP or whatever failed the first time, right? Oh, <laughs> um, right. So there's a second one out there. So maybe it's um, create or propose the language for I, I don't know. That I seems think... like what we did. I mean, I realize I just feel like we have um, these vague things that seem to just go from year to year to year. So I guess what I'm saying is you can't make him seat one when one doesn't exist. And so I but think this I year agree, we but when it's just proposing a plan, that's really Amorphous. No, I, I was saying pr propose a, you know, or create the board or something instead of the plan, move it one step further, but not seat the board. There's a difference between, I think, getting the board documents and charge in place and actually putting the people there. Mm. Either way, his review this year on that item is probably not going to be good. Okay. Can, can we do create and um, like bring appointments for approval? That that would I'd be. Does that yeah. touch on what you wanted to do, Jennifer? Yes, I want to get it very much to happening. Okay. <laughs> I want to go it's back existing. To, okay, yeah, ditto. Um, I want to go back to the youth empowerment because we have increased programming for youth empowerment. We don't have programming for youth empowerment. I think we need to develop that. Um, it's, it, you know, and I'm talking to uh, Councillor Walker and other people, there are very specific kinds of activities that would be doing that. So I would like to see increase to develop programming for 
Um, does that feel comfortable to people? I see a nod from Lynn. Okay. You guys are doing great. Mandy, did you have something else in this section? Uh, not in that. I have some. Uh, I had gotten through everything up to the racial equity and social justice goal. Okay. Okay, let's look there. So, this may be controversial, but in number four last year, we had added starting with public safety departments. I would recommend, I, I would request we delete that phrase only because in theory that should have already happened this year. And so we should be moving on from public safety departments to and remember, we need to identify other departments or just leave it general. Um, but the starting with was this year. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have a suggestion about the ahra report or part of reparations and 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 the resolution regarding structural racism is to revise my understanding has always been that part of it needs to be to revise or identify and then propose revisions for policies that the town has whether they be bylaws policies regulations whatever you call it um that create structural racism you know, the, the one that has been referenced many times in terms of structural racism is housing zoning requirements and single family only zoning. But I'm not going that specific. I'm just using that as an example in the country as something that has been generally identified as single family only uh, zoning can be considered structural racism. Um, but do I'm suggesting we add a fifth item to this that relates to proposing revisions to policies, bylaws, and regulations to address um, and remove structural racism, something like that, so that we've actually start reviewing all of our regulations to see what might be structurally wrong with them in creating these problems that the reparations report um, seeks to repair through payments and other programs, but those programs are never ending if we don't fix the underlying structure that has caused them. And so this, this proposal goal here is to try and identify those underlying structures from a municipal point of view that we ourselves can fix. I if if we are going to go with that, I would say identify and propose because it's not clear that you know that that's fine too. Yeah. Uh Sina. I was just wondering if I I think that is within the town manager's authority to pull um or to ask HRC or CSSJC for input on those things. It's already within their charges. And so that would be part of the town managers. I'm sorry, I was just thinking through this out loud to make sure oh, that all fine. make sure that all works. So would you say in consultation with? No, he can figure out how he wants to identify and propose. <laughs> that's, that's I just wanted to make sure that it was it's like, is there already a body that he can, um, you know, seek input from? And I think that there, there is. That's all set. Sorry, I'm just no, no. <laughs> saying, thinking that through out loud. One of the things that'd be great if you would remove from your vocabulary is "I'm sorry." I am sorry sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so am I sometimes. Uh, Michelle and then Lynn. Uh, I, this, this is maybe picky, but I'm wondering how people feel about the word dismantle as opposed to remove. Um, it just, I'm fine. Like, I, I don't feel to you know, I, I just, I think dismantle gives it more of a process than like remove feels very, you know, um, 
abrupt. We're not going to be able to abruptly remove necessarily, but we can identify things to help us dismantle it in a process. I think that's a good point. Lynn? Two things. Um, number of, uh, under racial equity and social justice, this one we've just added, I just want to be really clear. Um, it's almost like we have to have a process because I think some of us, maybe all of us, would probably look at a bylaw or policy and not even know that it in, had structural racism issues of it, uh, in, engaged in it. And so it's almost like we need, I, I just want to, maybe we don't need to say anything more than what we've already said, because we don't need to be prescriptive. I just want to say, I don't think that this is a um, easy task. It's not. It's, it's very complicated. Yeah. And yeah, getting the eyes to see where it exists. We had talked in uh, GOL about creating an equity lens, and then that got moved to DEI. So in a certain kind of sense, this is in process. But what Lynn is saying, you know, and, I guess you know, what I'd almost want to say is begin identifying and proposing revisions. If we got this done in one year, I would be astounded. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that count, uh, committee? begin to identify feels okay to me michelle i personally don't think we need begin i think we can because these are all getting get carried over but i'm not against it either um i do i do wanted to pick up on what you said though yeah. pat um that i know from speaking through the reparations process with Pamela and Jennifer, that they are in the process of developing a lens that we right. can go and look through all of these things, as Mandy suggests, using. And I have seen a little bit of that work, and I think it, it's really great. So I think that's sort of going to happen. I, I have no, it, it can say identify. It's just that I think that goal is going to be there for the next 10 years because we're never going to complete it. <laughs> I just, and I don't want to hear us talking about it. Well, you know, have we completed this? So that's all. Well, except that next year, it could be continue to identify. <laughs> right. Well, I, I'm fine just to say identify and propose. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I just think that people need to be realistic about the nature. I think it's a begin because we haven't asked for this before. Right. The other thing I wanted to, if we're okay with that, um, we did skip over the issue of the senior center. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. About and that. that's up under major capital investments. Yeah, it would be senior center, community center, youth. And I I don't know. I think, I think Athena's note should say how to word or something. The wording needs to be better. And we've got disagreements on this committee about the wording of youth empowerment senior and all of it together right right but it should be here you know yeah and, yeah. yeah there you go let's leave it there that's all so we can go on so my, so management goal, my management goal ones are much smaller let's uh, do those um I will. I, I want to come back to administration and leadership because that's kind of got a big question. But um, finance, we just have to update the years under the finance one. Um, FY twenty three goes to twenty four, and FY twenty four in two locations goes to twenty five. Um, I I wondered, and and last budget within that one last budget cycle, Paul talked about forming a some sort of financial working group regarding the school budget and town and all of that. I wondered whether we should put that into this item. I don't even know what he called it and whether it's even been done, but go back to what he said when he presented the budget and all and add whatever that was to get reports from that group. I just don't know what it was referenced as. Um, 
So Lynn, Lynn probably has a response to that. I, I don't remember the reference, but it brings up another issue. And that is we usually have invited Paul to meet with us to discuss the proposed goals. And so at either the next meeting or whatever, before we take it to the council, we should have that because he'll he'll provide the exactness to that. And yes, the group has been meeting. It's mostly, um, unfortunately, it's another one of those things that Sean was chairing and hmm. I'm not sure where it stands right now. Um, item four with, so infrastructure management number five, the maintain a list of future road and sidewalk repairs. Um, I wanted to add repairs and new builds or new, or I, I don't know what the wording is, but not just repairs, but at, particularly with sidewalks, um, new additions or some wording that, that references, hey, is there a future plan for adding sidewalks and what is that plan? I just don't know how to reference it. And then I just have two more after that. Could keep going and then I'll call on Jen. Okay. In community engagement, uh, item three says propose a plan for community visioning. I think we've got the plan. So I, I think it would be implement the plan beyond mm -hmm. propose. Um, and then back up at number one, administration. I, I, this is the one I skipped over. Administration and leadership. Number three is maintain essential municipal services. And so my question to the committee is, should we define the word essential? <laughs> what are our essential municipal services as opposed to non-essential but stuff we have more funds for it, it and i i save that for last because it is a massive conversation i think because all of us probably see different services as essential but should we be having that conversation um it was in number three administration and leadership athena so number one the big one management goal and it was the second paragraph number three that last sort of thing that uses the word essential, the very last line, essential municipal services. And should we, it's just a question, should we be defining that? Um, and if so, how do we define that? That was all I had. Okay. Jen, you've been waiting patiently. Thank you. Well, uh, this is what I wasn't going to say, it, but I'll, first I'll respond to Mandy. I agree we should do that. I mean, I personally tend to think of essential services as those in the absence of, we'll really notice it. You know, if water doesn't come out of your faucet, you notice it right away. But perhaps uh, roads and sidewalks should be added, but I think we should have a conversation. Um, I did want to say for infrastructure, oh, I don't know if this is getting too specific. It probably is back on Roman numeral four for, infra for infrastructure. Um, this is probably getting too specific, but... I wanted to kind of address the C click fix <laughs> because I've we made a big I really let residents know about that. Maybe I guess it was last year. Um, like, no, you know, you really do have some agency to try and get, you know, roads or sidewalks fixed. You go to C click fix. And then I've been hearing back, and it's even my own experience, because I put something in a year ago that you don't hear back from it. So could there be some way, you know, it's feeling, I think, to residents like a black hole, like it's something we tell them they can do, but, and then, so I don't know if we can get that specific. I even know that somebody wrote to the everyone on the council, they said they put in for a road to be repaired, some big, and nothing ever happened. And then the response they got back, well, well actually that's not a town road, it's a state road. And then they said, well, could there be something in C-Click Fix? So you actually get something back telling you it's not a town road, so you're, it's never going to be fixed going through C-Click Fix. So I just feel like there's some things that create, we're, tr we're, we're trying to give the public something so they feel like they have some agency and aren't frustrated, and yet it's, in this particular case, case creating kind of a source of frustration. So can we get that specific here? Okay. I'm going to say that it's 1125. And I would like to run this meeting over a bit, and I want to make sure that's okay with everybody. Is that possible? I have it's a hard stop. Possible. Okay, then then we're going to have to end. 
excuse me. Uh, we're going to have to end the discussion pretty close because I've got a call for public comment. I do not believe there's anyone in the audience, but I need to call for it. Um, so, and then I will come back to Mandy and Michelle. Um, so, uh, yeah, there are no, okay. So at 11.25, I'm calling for a period of public comment for the GOL committee. Seeing no one in the audience, I'm closing the public comment period. Thank you. Uh, I think Mandy, you were next. Yeah, I, I like Jennifer's idea. Um, I would get it a little less specific than C click fix specific. Um, ticker systems to, you know, you know, IT departments always have these, right? Like if it and as counselors, we I see it myself when I submit a, a ticket to IT, I get responses back from IT with a closure of, hey, we've closed your ticket, right? And C click fix opens the tickets sort of things, but never closes them visibly to the public. And so is okay. whether it goes on infrastructure management or community engagement, it might be better for community engagement if we don't specifically do it with that, but that ticket system for public okay. closure. Yeah, I don't, yeah, you're not saying, yeah. So it's there and it's there for us to look at. I wanna bring up, because people are saying they have to leave them. We have a meeting on uh, November fifteenth, and we have a meeting on uh, we have a meeting on in my calendar as not um, on the twenty second, which is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I'd actually like to cancel that meeting and move it to the fifteenth of November. We also are meeting on the eighth uh, of November, so that would be two in a row. And I'm also thinking about is it possible to add Wednesday the 29th or an extra meeting in December to make sure and cancel them if we get the work done, but to make sure we have everything done that we need to have done. Uh, Jennifer and then Mandy and then Michelle. Um, I just wanted to say, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to, I will not be able to make the November 15th meeting. Okay, well, it is, yeah, okay. Just in case it's a quorum issue. Okay, so and that right now is not a meeting. But we do have a meeting on the 22nd, and I believe that's the day before Thanksgiving. No? No. I had, the meeting, had one on the 29th, not the 22nd, that our next yeah. meeting was November 8th, okay. and then the 9th, and then the 13th. I would be okay with adding one on the 15th. I can make that meeting. And I can make that. Lynn, would you be able to make a meeting on the 15th? And uh, yes. Michelle, on the 15th. Yes. I can okay. make the 15th. Um, and I also wanted to say, since I am the only one that is not running for re-election, if you would like me to chair the meeting on the 8th because you might be exhausted or whatever you might be, I'm offering to come back as a chair for one meeting only. Um, I, I, I am I'm making a, a decision by myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Thank Thank you. And, Thank and you. good luck. To the rest everyone. of us might be hung over. No matter what, one way or the other. <laughs> right. <laughs> nice, nice offer, Michelle. Really yes, nice. Yes, thank you very much. We have two minutes. Is there anything to add right now in, within the two minutes? I brought and this up earlier, but I, um, I, I wanted to make sure that it's on your radar that we'll be talking about the carryover memo. Yes, um, I have it on my radar. In November. Okay. Yes, it will come up in the, yes. Thank you. I'm going to probably do a run on it and then see where we get with it and bring it to the committee. So thank you for that. Did you cut your hair? Yeah, looks nice. Okay. <laughs> Didn't know if it was just pulled back and falling out or falling forward. <laughs> All right. I'm going to uh, uh, adjourn this meeting unless there's anything anybody wants to add. And thank you for your work, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.